If insulation isn't fitted precisely, you'll have a performance gap between what's achieved in a laboratory and what's achieved on site. Builders now have to photograph their jobs to prove that insulation has been fitted properly, so there's no hiding place. If they run a thermal camera over your job and it shows up cold spots, you might have to start all over again. So Sam's going to show you a simple way to avoid any problems by getting a perfect fit every time. So today I'm installing the uh, PIR insulation on this quick garden garage. So when you're insulating one of these buildings, you need to put the insulation in a good snug fit so there's no gap, so you don't get any leakage. Then you put the batten over the top which creates an air gap, breathable membrane, and then the cladding goes over the top and that's vented so the air will pass through it. So we're gonna fill it full of Kingspan Therma PIR insulation and that's gonna keep it lovely and cozy. So when it comes to cutting your PIR board, there's a few things you're gonna to need to remember and you need. So you're definitely gonna need a mask and some um, eye protection. And if you're using any power tools, put your air defenders on. You're gonna need a straight edge, something to mark with, a pen or a pencil, something to take the measurements, and then some flexible sealer to go around the edges. Right, in this instance, what I do, I measure my aperture. So if you've got 450 centers, if it's perfect, the, the inside will be 355, but it rarely happens. So measure it, measure and measure again. Put your line on, take your measurements, strike your line. I've already done this one. You can see the line there. And I've discovered the best way to do this to keep this cut lovely and square is to run my circular saw through at full depth. It'll only go halfway and then just use a normal hand wood saw to finish the cut. You see that line there? That's the line of the circular saw. Then it gives you a shoulder to work to. It just gives you a lovely square cut. Now, I've, all the insulation I've ever done, this is the best way for me, unless you've got a really expensive, like, Festool tool or something like that. When you're cutting insulation with a circular saw, just make sure you've got the right blade in. Check with the manufacturer to make sure you always get the best result. Try not to dent it too much. Twelve and a half. Although we've got a nice tight fit on all of the PIR, I'm still running a bead of flexible sealant to stop any air leaks. And then it's going to be battened on top so they are stuck in there good and solid. Should you ever have a bit of a loose fit, you really need to pump it full of foam to make sure it doesn't move anywhere. And then, um, I mean, you can put batten behind it to keep it in the place to create your air gap if that's necessary, like in a ceiling. Um, but in this instance, it's absolutely 100%. Right, so this is the last stage. You need to seal up all the joints where the boards intersect, tape across there, tape around the edges, tape it all up. So there's still a few more boards to cut in, but we're nearly there now. And I would say using Kingspan Therma has turned an ordinary garage into a space that you can use all year round. If you want to find out more about the Kingspan Therma range of PIR insulation, follow the links in the description area and make sure you subscribe to Skill Builder and look out for the complete installation of the garage kit from Quick Garden featured in this episode.